All right, my dear students, having studied the cost versus NRV rule, now it's time to study uh, inventory valuation specific methods. There are two particular methods that are being tested in our exam. One is first in, first out, pronounced as FIFO. And secondly, we have AFCO. AFCO stands for average cost. Now, there are two particular methods of valuing inventory. Uh, the inventory standard is beta IAS 2. IAS stands for inventory, uh, sorry, international accounting standard. And there is particular uh, standard for inventory that is IAS 2. And IAS 2 states that inventory shall be valued at lower of cost and NRV. We have already discussed that. And IAS 2 also states that we are going to use one of these two inventory valuation methods. One is first in, first out. And another one is average cost now sir what are these methods uh, so let us discuss that g beta so there are three particular methods one is first in first out another one is last in first out and the third one is afco method now let us discuss what does these three methods mean uh beta, for example let us uh, take an example of a business maybe you are a distributor of uh, pepsi cola okay you are selling pepsi cola to different uh, stores and supermarkets for example uh, that uh, what happened that you have particular stock of Pepsi Cola first uh, stock that you bought from uh, Pepsi Corporation was for maybe one can was for one dollars okay one can was uh, for maybe let us suppose uh, take an example one dollar those second start uh, the second lot that you got from Pepsi Cola was for maybe 1.1 dollar okay because the pepsi has increased the prices due to inflation now the third lot that you got from pepsi was for 1.2 dollar okay and for example if you are selling the stock for maybe 1.5 dollars so uh, whenever you go to the warehouse you basically have three different uh, lots uh, one is for bought for one dollar the second lot may be for 1.1 dollar and the third lot was for 1.2 dollar now uh, i haven't uh, kept those separately because these are all identical units okay i'm not sure that which of the stock uh, i basically bought for one dollar and which one of that i bought for 1.1 and which one of that i bought for 1.2 but still i need to give the value to the computer or maybe the accountant because if i assume that i am selling the stock one dollar stock for 1.5 therefore i will be getting a gross profit of 50 cent on each pepsi can sold okay and if i'm assuming that it is 1.1 dollar worth of stock then the profit would be only 40 cent that is 0.4 dollar and if i'm assuming the stock is the latest stock that i bought and it is uh, bought for 1.2 dollar then my profit would be only 30 cent that is 0.3 dollar if i'm assuming that all of the stock is being sold for 1.5 dollar now it is an assumption based method FIFO or LIFO or AFCO. FIFO means first in, first out. What does it mean, beta? Uh, FIFO means that I am uh, assuming that first in, first out. First in, first out means I am assuming the stock that I have bought before would be the stock that I am actually selling it now. Okay. The stock that has uh, came first in my warehouse would be the actual stock that I am selling first, okay, first in, first out. So let us suppose I have uh, 100 units for uh, both three of them. So I would assume, first of all, I am selling the stock that was worth $1, that has been purchased for $1. Once I am done selling 100 units, so then I would assume that now I am selling the stock that have actually cost me what? $1.1. And on that particular stock, the profit would be lower. And once the 100 units that were bought for $1.1 have been finished, now I would assume that I am selling the stock that has actually cost me how much? $1.2. So this means first in, first out. So I am assuming uh, the stock that I have bought first would be the actual stock that I have sold first. Okay, this is first in, first out. And uh, in practical, if you see, most of uh, the businesses follow FIFO. Uh, we are not uh, talking about practical right now. We are uh, working about the accounting. But in practical also, if you see the physical flow of goods as well, so most of the businesses are following FIFO. Now, let me give you an example. 
for example if you are uh, if you are going to a chemist okay if you are going to a pharmacy medicine shop uh, the, the the person the chemist that is sitting next to the counter behind the counter uh, he or she would uh, always try to sell the old medicines why because as you may be aware that all uh, medicines have expiry all drugs have expiry so therefore they would always try to sell the old stock first okay first in first out why because they are worried that if the stock got expired then they will uh, lose the money okay so therefore they would try to sell the stock before it would get expired okay before it would get expired so this is basically the premise of first and first out so practically many businesses use this maybe uh, if you are dealing in fashion goods okay uh, the goods particularly get out of fashion okay so if you are clo selling clothes or maybe shoes or jewelry so you would try to sell the older stock first and the newer stock you would sell it maybe after eat so therefore uh, the in the on the chandra uh, the people do not have any options so therefore they can buy the old stock as well okay this is basically the premise of first in first out similar is the premise with the goods that are perishable okay anything uh, that is uh, relating to eating and drinking so people would sell it uh, earlier okay old stock would be uh, sell earlier because the thing would get uh, old and it would get expire it would be get rotted so this is about fifo lifo would be opposite of that in last in first out we would assuming that we have sold the goods uh, that we have bought it uh, the latest goods would be sell first the latest uh, purchase would be sold first and the oldest good, goods would be uh, sold in the end okay this is last in first out so it's very rare in many of the businesses we use fifo uh, but in practically if we say there are some things uh, that uh, they are older enough than uh, they would uh, be earned uh, more they would be worth more so there are many example one of the example may be liquor that is uh, prohibited in islam liquor uh, is uh, prohibited in islam wine why because uh, we have heard that uh, the more uh, older the wine gets the more price it would fetch in the market okay so the wine businesses basically they would go for uh, the lifo method last and first out so we are not concerned about what the businesses actually do with the physical flow of goods we are just concerned with the accounting perspective of that so if a pepsi cola business is falling last in first out they would assume that first of all we are selling the stock that has been bought latest and maybe for 1.2 dollar and then we would assume once the stock is over we would assume we are selling the stock for 1.1 dollar uh, uh, the the stock that we have bought for 1.1 dollar and finally in the end we would assume now is the time that we are selling the stock that has actually cost how much one dollar so this is basically how lifo works and afco is basically the average method in afco what we would do we would uh, find out the average every time we buy different stock of pepsi cola we would take an average for example first of all we have stock worth one point one dollar and then one point one dollar and maybe the average is now one point five so we would assume now we are selling the stock that have actually cost the business how much 1.5 dollar so this is how uh, fifo works now let us see with this help of this particular example uh, this is my own example the following data relates to the stock of pso company pso is oil company here in pakistan pakistan state oil okay it's an oil company such as the aramco company in the uh, middle east uh, saudi arabian so uh, on first january uh, as you can see it is opening inventory january uh, is the month and the first january is with opening inventory we have 500 liter or 500 barrels of oil uh, in stock and it costs us how much 50 dollar or uh, a barrel or liter okay this is the opening inventory then we have bought 700 liters then we have sold then we have purchased again purchase and again sold so there are particularly these three requirements in the exam relating to uh, inventory evaluation first of all we need to find cost of issue also known as cost of sale cost of sales means at uh, the stock that we have sold uh, for this much dollar how much it actually cost the business okay cost of sale or cost of issue means the same then we need to find the closing inventory uh, closing inventory is the inventory that is left at the end of the year 
we need to find the value of closing and entry and then finally we need to find the value of gross profit now let us do with this example now there are particular two ways to solve this uh, inventory valuation uh, question uh, one is a perpetual method and the second one is beta periodic method there are two ways to solve this one is perpetual method and another one is periodic method now let us do this exercise first of all we are going for perpetual method now the good thing uh, about perpetual method is that uh, in fifo uh, either we use perpetual method or periodic method in both of the cases the answer would be the same okay if we are using perpetual method or periodic method so we would uh, uh, usually go for periodic method in the exam because it is a short working and basically this question uh, doesn't uh, get much marks in the exam so therefore uh, we would go for periodic but uh, let us discuss both of these methods perpetual means continuous perpetual means continuous so let us see perpetual method uh, maybe the method you have learned uh, to solve this is slightly different but the answer would be the same now let us see first of all uh, we need to see that uh, which particular stocks we do have I am doing just rough working. First of all, I have opening inventory of how much liters? 500 liters. And the cost of that would be 50. So I am just writing all of the stock listed, all of the stocks that I have bought in this particular month. Uh, on first, we had an opening inventory of 500 liters worth $50 each. How much stock we have bought after that? We have uh, bought 700 liters at the rate 55. This is the second lot. And then we have bought how much? 400 liters at the rate of $60 just writing it all together all the purchases and opening inventory and finally I bought 1500 liters at the rate of 65 so basically I have these four particular stocks one is opening then on the third I have bought it then 10th and then 15 now let us see whichever is the sales now the first sales took place in a PSO company on 7th of January where we sold 1000 liters at the rate 78 although i've sold it for 78 dollar but i need to ask that uh, what was the actually cost of that oil that i've sold it for 78 dollars per liter okay so if you see i am discussing about the seven if i am discussing about the seven the, these particular stocks that are on 10th and 15th i have actually haven't bought this yet okay i'm just uh, discussing about first and third why because beta if we are uh, right now it is the seventh so in the warehouse we only have two stocks that is opening inventory and that is the stock that i bought on third okay so if i am going for beta first and first out i would assuming that i would sell 500 liters first okay although i mixed all of the oil and i'm not sure whichever is bought for 50 and 55 but still for the sake of accounting i need to tell my accountant that uh, whether i have sold uh, 500 uh, dollar uh, sorry 500 liter first or 700 liter first so as far as beta first in first out is concerned i would assuming uh, that i would sell 500 liters first and the remaining 500 liter would be sold from this lot that was uh, bought uh, for 55 dollar each okay so let's see uh, I have to sell 1000 liters and I have two options uh, as far as first in first out is concerned I would sell 500 liters the, these first and how much these cost the business these were cost $50 so what I am doing right now I am uh, working on this and I am just rough working I, it I am just cancelling the stock that I have actually sold so this 500 liter I have actually sold but the requirement is 1000 liter for 7th of January and out of this 1000 liter only 500 liter I have uh, sold and I still need 500 liter I am going to pick from this particular lot that is $55 each and I am just updating the inventory and I am still left with how, how many liters 200 liters okay so these 500 liters were actually cost how much $55 so if I multi multiply 500 liters with $55 now this would be 27,500 we need to just add up both of these so the total would be 52,500 okay total would be 52,500 so this is basically how we find the cost of sales there is another sales that took place on what date at the end of the month 
So if we are talking beta for the end of the month, now we have all of the options available. At the end of the month, uh, we have three lots left. Okay. First of all, we have 200 liters left over from the inventory that we bought on third for $55. Then we have bought 400 liters that we bought for 60. Then we have bought 1500 liters. Now the question here arises if we are using first in first out. Uh, we would assume whichever stock would sell first. Either it would be uh, for $55 stock or it would be $65. If you are concerned beta about FIFO, we would assume that we are selling the stock worth how much? $55 first. So we would uh, empty this stock. G $55 stock first. We would empty that. And then beta the requirement is how much? $600. And we have just sold this stock $200. Uh, sorry 200 liters we still need 400 liters now as you can see uh, the entire 400 dollar uh, lot we do have and this we have bought it for how much dollar we have bought it for 60 dollar we just need to multiply 400 uh, from uh, from by 60 dollar and this would be 24000 okay 24000 just need to add up these just need to add up both of these 1100 and 24000 sorry 11000 24000 and this is 35,000. So, beta, there are two uh, uh, sales that took place in this particular month. If we add up both of these, this would be known as cost of issue or cost of sales. Cost of sales or cost of issue means uh, the stock that we have sold this uh, this month, this uh, stock uh, basically cost the business how much? 87,500. So, the first requirement we are done with that, we have found the cost of sales. Secondly, we need to find the closing inventory. So if we were doing this, this rough working, we can easily find closing inventory. Now, as you can see, the only inventory that is left over is this 1500 liters. Okay. So we have sold this first, then 200 liter also, then this 700 is finished. And finally, this 400 liter is also sold. So we are just left with the last inventory. Jibita. Jibita. Finally, we have 1500 liters. And as you can see, 1500 liters that is left. Uh, from the latest uh, value and the closing inventory would be left from the bottom and the latest price that we do have is $65 okay oil now cost us $65 so the inventory would be left from the bottom why because we we kept selling from the top so therefore the closing inventory would be left from the bottom so if we multiply 1500 liters by 65 this is the value of closing inventory so we have done with the two requirements. Thirdly, we have the last requirement for gross profit. And how to find this gross profit? Gross profit is particularly simple. What we need to do, we need to, uh, uh, there is uh, also one of the mnemonic that I have uh, developed and this is known as ICOP. What does this ICOP stand for? Beta ICOP stand for issues plus closing is equal to opening plus purchase. Issue plus closing is equal to opening plus purchase. Issue means the inventory that we have sold and closing means the inventory that is left over. So the cost of issue and cost of closing inventory should always equal to what? Cost of opening inventory or the cost of purchase. Okay. So let us see whether the uh, inventory that we have sold, how much it costs. 87,500. We can remember it with the mnemonic ICOP, Intelligence Cop. Okay. COP Cop. So issue inventory is this and closing inventory how much is left over it is 97,500 worth of oil and the opening inventory how much do we had beta opening inventory 500 liters at the rate 50 was $25,000 and then finally we need to find the purchase and how to find purchase beta as you can see there are three particular purchases uh, first lot that we have purchased was 700 liters at the rate of how much 55. So what we need to do, we need to multiply 700 at the rate of 55. The value is 38,500. Then we have bought how much? 400 liters at the rate 60, 4, 6 are 24,000. And finally, we have bought beta how much? Uh, we have bought uh, 1,500 liters at the rate 65. If we add up all of these, so the value for purchase, we can easily get the purchase total is 160,000. So if we add issue plus closing, it equals 185,000. And so is the opening plus purchase, it is also the same. So it is uh, very logical that whatever we sell and whatever is left over and uh, how, uh, where do we got that inventory? Uh, we must have this in the opening inventory or we must have, we, we have purchased in this particular period.
so either it's first in first out or either it's last in first out whether it's perpetual or periodic in all of these this i cop will remain too this is just to check whether we have done the calculation correct or not so beta finally the third requirement that we got we need to find the gross profit and how to find the gross profit beta it's particularly easy to find gross profit and for that reason we need to make a trading account what is a trading account trading account beta is a partial income statement an income statement that is only till gross profit okay income statement till gp is known as trading account so first of all we have sales we don't have any sales return then we have a cost of sale uh, and how to find this normally opening inventory then need to add purchase then closing and opening add purchase less closing would be cost of sale and if we did a cost of sales from the sales we are left with gross profit let us see the sales how many uh, how much we have sold beta first of all we have sold 1000 liters at the rate 75 we just we just need to multiply 1000 with the rate of 78 okay 1000 into 78 would be 78000 and then the other stock that we have sold was 600 liter at the rate of 79 just need to multiply 600 at the rate of 79 and this would how much uh, it would be we just need to add up both of the totals and the total revenue in this month is how much 125400 okay so previously we were just talking about cost of sales and the cost of closing inventory and now we are talking about the revenue actual uh, revenue we have generated from selling that oil now the opening inventory beta we already are aware of the opening inventory value and that is 25000 okay 500 liters at the rate how much 50 dollar it is 25000 then we have purchases how much purchases do we got purchases uh but the purchases that we got is uh we have already found out purchases it was 160000 we just need to multiply uh 700 liters at the rate 55 400 into 60 50 and into 65 just need to add up all of these it is 160000 now the closing inventory now as you can see we have already found out the closing inventory and how much was the closing inventory value was 97500 opening add purchase less closing would be cost of sale now as you can see uh, we can find cost of sale this way as well and we have already found cost of sales by using perpetual method long method okay we have already found out this cost of sale so we can also do that as we can just uh, deduct sale from cost of sale now there is no need to find this through opening at purchase less closing why because we have already found the cost of sale so if we deduct cost of sale from the revenue we are left with what gross profit okay this is beta gross profit and this is the third requirement and this is uh, how we solve a question using first in first out and that is perpetual method so beta after going through this perpetual method for first in first out now there is another method for first in first out that is known as periodic method so for periodic method we are not required to make this table okay and for periodic method we can do the shortcut method it is also known as shortcut or periodic method now what is the basic difference between perpetual and periodic beta in perpetual method a perpetual means continuous okay we need to do the working every time uh, we are buying or selling the inventory in periodic method we would only do the working at the end of the month okay periodically or maybe end of the week or end of the quarter depending on how many transactions does the business have now the good thing is that in first in first out either we use perpetual or periodic for both of that the answer would remains the same now let us see the periodic method and this is the method which we are more likely to use in the examination okay because in exam we do not have much time or the marks in the question or the space being provided so therefore we would prefer periodic method for periodic method beta first of all we need to see that how many units we have in closing inventory now how to find closing inventory units there is particular sh shortcut working for that as well we would be starting with opening then we need to add purchases then we need to deduct sale units in order to find closing inventory units or maybe liters or kgs or whatever cost unit we use first of all beta we have opening inventory how many liters do we have in opening inventory beta we have 500 liters so we'd be starting with 500 how many liters we have bought in this particular month we have bought 
400 and 1500 we just need to add these three values 700 400 it's 1100 plus 1500 it would be 2600 liters so in this particular period month or maybe quarter we have purchased how many liters 2600 liters now what about the sales how many liters we have sold we have sold thousand liters first and then finally we have sold 600 thousand plus 600 it would be 1600 liters okay how many liters beta we have sold we have sold 1600 liters opening add purchase less sales it would be closing inventory okay it would be closing so how many units we are left with closing inventory beta closing inventory liters are only 1500 so in this way beta we can find that how many liters that we have at the end of the month now the question here arises sir what would be the value of that inventory if we are not making this table and how can we find this 97,500 value of inventory? So, beta, it's particularly simple. We are going through first in, first out. This means we are selling the inventory as soon as we are buying it. So, we have started selling from the top. So, therefore, the inventory that is left over would always be the inventory from the bottom. Okay. Or it would be, uh, we would say that we are using descending order okay for closing inventory and ascending order for selling the inventory okay so for finding cost of sale we are using the ascending order from the top to bottom and for the closing inventory it would be from bottom to the top okay for the descending order now uh, whichever lot do we have at the bottom so the latest inventory that we have bought was 1500 liters and by coincidence as you can see we need 1500 liters and the exact 1500 liters we have bought it's not necessary that it is the exact 1500 but now it is the exact 1500 and this lot is particular bought particularly bought for how much 65 dollars we just need to multiply this 1500 liters with 65 that is the uh, inventory from the bottom and that is how much 97,500. now as you can see beta both of these values are the same okay both of these values are same so this is beta how we find closing inventory when we are using periodic method or shortcut method okay so uh, there is another question sir that what happens uh, if this is not 1500 uh, or uh, what happens if this is 2000 unit now what we would do so beta if this is 2000 uh, liters so the we would go from bottom up okay so the 1500 liter would still cost us how much with the rate of 65 and if the if the closing inventory is 2000 then the remaining 400 we are going to got from this 60 dollar we need to multiply 400 at the rate of 60 so if we add up 1500 and 400 we are done with 1900 uh, liters and we still need 100 liters so the 100 liter balance would be got from this inventory okay that is for 55 dollars okay we are have to go from bottom to the uh, towards to the top okay so beta this is how we find the closing inventory now if we have found closing inventory so the first requirement is done we haven't made this table sir how can we find this cost of sale now it's easy beta we can just make the trading account the sales is the same revenue would remain the same opening inventory would still be the same purchases would still be the same so beta either we are using fifo or lifo sales opening and purchase is all the same the only thing that is different that is closing inventory now we have found this closing inventory using this bottom up technique okay opening add purchase less closing would be what cost of sale okay opening add purchase less closing would be what cost of sale if we did a uh, sales and cost of sale we are left with what we are done with the gross profit and as we can see the gross profit is the same and the cost of sale and closing inventory is also same so these are the better two methods one is perpetual or one is periodic so we would be going for this method in the exam shortcut method okay uh, so therefore because the answer is the same for both of that the we do not require to do this long working in the exam 